Hello everybody, this is Tim again here with my review for Friday the 13th Part 8, Jason Takes the Love Boat, or Jason Takes the Titanic, as some fans like to call it, but Jason Takes Manhattan. Uh, here's my deluxe edition copy once again. I actually don't mind the cover, once again I don't mind it. In the back for anybody that gives a fuck. Life in the city is murder. So is this film. <laughs> Special features. Killer commentary by the actors. Scott Reeve, Jensen Dagen, and Kane Hodder. New York has a new problem. The making of Friday the 13th Part 8. Jason takes Manhattan. Slash scenes and gag reel. Okay. The film is directed by Rob Heaton. Um, it's not a very good film. This is the last of the Paramount films for the, for the rights were sold to New Line Cinema and they took over. This is not a good film. It's not. It's only barely better than Part 5, just because Part 5 is more dull. This film is more entertaining than Part 5. Uh, just inadvertently because Jason's like uh, killing people through the entire film. Plus you get the ship, or Jason on a boat, I mean. Which is, uh, well, yeah, a cruise ship. Jason's on a cruise ship, which is more entertaining than, than in Part 5. Like the ship is, you know, a decent... Uh, to be honest, because they didn't have the money to do what they wanted to do in Manhattan in this film, and only like the last of the movie takes place in Manhattan, I would have been happier if they would just called it Friday the 13th Part 8 and just had the whole movie take place on the ship, to be honest. And I wouldn't have had to have, uh, I wouldn't be uh, hating on it so much if they didn't promise something that they couldn't deliver. But, uh, yeah, well, because the, the, the ship would have been a decent new setting, you know, for our Jason film. But as the film the way it is, let's jump right into the shit sandwich here. Um, film starts out, you got two people out on a boat at Crystal Lake. They're just fucking screwing and same old shit you've seen before in seven movies before now. Uh, Jason's resurrection in this film is just plain lazy. Just fucking lazy. <laughs> His, uh, he gets hit by an underwater electrical cable, by the, like a charge from it. I'm like, okay, eh, that's so lazy. The boat's anchor gets like caught on it, and he gets fucking. It gets, the the boat's anchor gets caught in an electric cable, and it's, it gets drug over to Jason, and it causes like an electrical surge to go through him. And I'm like, that's so lazy. That's so fucking lazy. But uh, they need him to come back, and lo and behold, he's back to life. So Jason comes back once again, played by Kane Hodder. Jason's looking this film like the way he looks with the mask on, and he kind of looks like uh, the fucking swamp thing or creature from the Black Lagoon because he's like so like uh. <laughs> He's got like a uh, seaweed and fucking he's wet completely like 24-7. <laughs> Which I find funny how he can sneak up on anybody with his boots filled with water, but whatever. <laughs> but yeah, the Jason look when he's got the mask on, everything is fine. When Jason takes off his when Jason's mask comes off at the end of the film in the sewer, he looks like fucking shit. Utter shit. This is the worst look the character's ever had. He looks like a fucking jack-o'-lantern. He looks like he looks so shitty compared to the way he did in part seven. It's so disgraceful compared to the way he looked in part seven. But, um, jump back into the beginning of the film, Jason comes on the boat, he gets a new hockey mask that the guy has that he was using to, uh, scare his girlfriend with. So Jason gets a new hockey mask. This is the one the last film was broke by Tina. Jason gets a new hockey mask, he comes in there, he stabs, uh, he stabs the guy in the gut. Uh, pretty decent scene here. The girl takes off, she's on the boat, Jason comes off, well, Jason goes after her. He finds her head in the boat, and you get a little, you get like a kind of a slow build up little kill scene here where he's like getting ready to stab her, and she's like, No, no, no. He just stabs her like right in the chest. Huh. Which was entertaining, I didn't mind that. That was a decent kill. Mm. Well, that the film has that going for it. It has better kill scenes than part five, but the kill scenes in part five just felt more dull, and, and uh, the ones in this one aren't perfect either. They're pretty bad too. But uh, the ones in part five just felt more dull to me. But uh, back to this film here. Enough about the shit-tastic part five. Um, so Jason kills those two, and some for some reason Crystal Lake like lets out into like the fucking ocean somehow. I'm not sure how that is. I guess well the filmmakers have said it's because they never showed you the entire lake in all the other films, so they guess people would buy it, so they kind of cheated on that a little bit. But whatever. I don't. I'm not gonna hold too much of that against them. But uh. So Jason like goes down, swims into the ocean and fucking boards a ship instead of going to the camp. So I'm like, okay, what? Because it looks like the camp is about to reopen. So wouldn't Jason just automatically go to the camp and be killing people there? I mean, he's not gonna like leave his 
home turf and fucking go on a cruise ship. It doesn't make any sense. But they had to tweak it a little bit to get into Manhattan. It has to make sense some way. Uh, so he gets on the ship. It's a graduating class. Uh, the, they're heading on a trip to Manhattan. He gets on there. He fucking starts popping people out one by one. He kills this uh, rock and roll chick by hitting her with a fucking guitar. Uh, he kills this uh, kills this uh, boxer who's like in a sauna. He takes a rock and shoves it like straight into his chest. That was an entertaining kill scene. I didn't mind the sauna death. Uh, there's the bitchy girl on there. The main, the main lead is, uh, I believe the, the actress name was Jensen Daggett. Uh, well, hold on just a minute. Yes, Jensen Daggett. I just said her name at the beginning of the video and I already forgot it. That's how memorable the film is. But yes, Jensen Daggett. Uh, she plays a character named Rennie who has like some kind of weird connection to Jason that makes no fucking sense. And all through the movie she has like flashes of Jason where she sees him in hallucinations but they're not like really hallucinations because her dog can see him too so it's not like repressed memories or something like that coming back it seems more like she can like sense like the spiritual energy of like Jason's inner child or something I'm like how the fuck does that work how do you explain that the movie never explains it so I'm at a loss <laughs> the writing is pretty bad here and this film feels really rushed and put together but uh that makes no fucking sense and Jason looks different in every single fucking scene a little Jason does. Every time you see him, he looks different, different makeup on him every single time. And it's continued the arrows every single time. But like at the beginning of the movie, when the, he, this guy's telling his girlfriend like the history of Camp Crystal Lake to catch people up, you know, who haven't seen the first seven, which why you'd be watching part eight if you haven't seen the first seven, I don't know. But uh, he tells the story of little Jason when he drowned in. And then you see little Jason drowned in, and he looks absolutely normal. He doesn't have like his deformed head or nothing. He just looks absolutely normal. So again, I'm like, what the fuck movie? What the fuck? But uh, so that's another continued error right there. Jason, little Jason looks different every fucking scene in this piece of shit film. That makes no fucking sense. Uh, and then you find out later in the movie that her backstory with Jason was that she actually fucking uh, her uncle was trying to teach, force her to swim because she didn't know how to swim. He threw her in Crystal Lake and she seen little Jason in the water. Now Rennie's just now graduating high school, so she can't be that old. And Jason drowned in like you know, 1957, I believe. So the timeline here makes no fucking sense at all. I guess you could say that maybe where he, well, he told her about the legend of Jason before he dropped her and before he, before he knocked her in the water. So maybe she just hallucinated him. But then again, why would she be seeing all this like uh, Jason inner child shit to the whole movie if it was just a hallucination? I don't know. It makes no fucking sense. It's a complete and utter plot hole. It's total bullshit. But uh, back to the film here where I was in the story, if you want to call it a story. Jason's on the ship. He's killed those two people already. Um, he kills the... Uh, well, you got the you got this guy in the film. His name is Sean. The character's name is Sean. This guy, he's alright. He's decently likable. I don't think he's any better or worse than Nick from the last movie, really. But, uh... You got him there in the film, and he's like, of course, he's got a crush on Rennie, and they're pretty much, might as well be boyfriend and girlfriend. And uh, his dad is like an overbearing dad. Well, not so much overbearing, but wants to force him into his same career. And uh, so Jason kills his dad and the uh, and, uh, and the dad's like first mate on the ship, I believe you'd call it. He stabs uh, the first mate in the back, and then the dad. You get a pretty decent scene here where the dad's like bent over looking at the guy's body, and Jason comes straight up behind him with like a machete, I believe, and slits his throat, and he kind of like raises his back like that, and you can see the wound going through it like that. The camera like pans off to the storm happening and then it goes back and Jason just he well his body just falls down. Which that was entertaining, that was a decent scene. I like that. But uh you uh, you get a character in here by the name of Julius who's a boxer and he's like this tough guy. He gets real funny lines, like when everybody wants to band together on the ship to try to go find him because they find uh Sean's dad's so they find the so they find some of the corpses, find Sean's dad's dead body, so they want to go, you know, kill this motherfucker before he gets them. <laughs> Well, as Julius puts it, let's go find this motherfucker before he finds us, which I thought was funny. So he wants to go get Jay. They want to, you know, band together and try to kill Jason. Um, when you get funny, funny lines, this guy has the best lines, my favorite lines in the film. I like this actor. Uh, I like this character, too. I almost wish he was the lead. He just cracks me up. They're picking out weapons, and they're like, where are you taking Julius? And he goes, nothing. And he picks up a shotgun. He's like, cocks it and goes, but this gun. <laughs> I love that. I love it. I wish he would have been the lead of the film. But that's me. Um, 
you got this bitchy girl on there who seems like a do-over of Melissa from Part 7. Her name's Tamara, and she's like the prom queen type chick who's really popular and wants to be number one at everything and considers herself dominant over everybody. She's been, she knocks, Rennie, Rennie has like a phobia of drowning, so she knocks Rennie into the water to get revenge on her because she thinks she narked on her because she's using drugs, even though she didn't. Her uncle is the, the un, her uncle, the one that knocked her into the water when she was little trying to force her to swim, is like the fucking, uh, is like one of the teachers, I believe, or he might have been the principal, shit, I don't know, but, uh, he's on the ship, and, uh, they think that she told him that, uh, they, that, uh, they were using that her and fucking Kelly Who from the Scorpion King were using drugs. But uh he just happened to walk in at the right moment, so she didn't really say anything. But so she gets revenge on him by knocking her into the water and you get another hallucination of little Jason who looks nothing like he did in the previous scene before. And then she goes into the bathroom, you got another hallucination of little Jason, and he looks nothing again like he did before. He looks more deformed sometimes, less deformed other times. I mean no fucking sense, continuity wise. Maybe the director's trying to say that Jason was was drowned in as a normal kid and became more deformed as like the longer he was underwater, but that makes no sense continuity wise with the other films. It's not hard to keep up continuity with the Friday the 13th films. I'm sorry, Paramount. It just wasn't. All you had to do was just keep the Jason Child deformed for the whole movie. Just keep him looking the way he should, and that was it. But you don't. You just fuck it up the ass. You just let the director do whatever he wanted to do so he could rush the film into the finish line and throw it out in theaters quick. And you fucked yourself up because of that. You fucked yourself. But anyway. So, uh, the bitchy chick, she gets killed by, uh, Jason comes into the, well, she frames the, she frames the teacher, uh, Charles, I believe is the character's name. She frames him, the, because he threatens to, like, call her parents on her, keep her on board the ship, I guess. And she wants uh, to see the sights, I suppose. <laughs> so she frames him by, like, kissing on him and everything, and gets her, this, dorky guy named Wade or something, I believe is his character's name, who looks kind of like a young Matt Damon to record it with his camera. Um, but, uh, so she gets killed when Jason shows up. He, like, fucking busts into her room, knocks her, like, head, and knocks her into a, a mirror, and she falls down. Jason walks in there, and you get a kind of a cool scene here. I kind of like this, where Kane Harden just goes, fucking bam, busts the little mirror out, and picks up a shard of glass, and then just, he even leans up real slow, and then slabs right down on her, just, well, stabs right down on her, just like that, and then, the uh, then it just cuts away. You hear her scream, but that was that was kind of cool. I kind of actually enjoyed that cut there. So she was killed that way. Kelly Hu, her friend, she shows up there, finds her body. Uh, Kelly Hu gets killed in like the fucking disco dance room on the ship, where she's like in there and she keeps looking around and seeing Jason and like he just keeps reappearing and disappearing at all the exits. Yeah, that's right. In this film, Jason can like fucking teleport for some reason. I don't know why. All the other films, Jason. Could like pop up in front of his victims and stuff like that. But that's because it was Crystal Lake, you know, the woods. He knew the area. Fuck, he's lived there his entire existence. So that makes sense. Here on the ship, it makes no fucking sense because he's literally teleporting. It makes no sense. Uh, so he just pops up in front of every random exit. She can't get out. She turns around. He grabs her straight by the neck, lifts her all the way up in the air, just choking the shit out of her while there's like disco music playing and the lights are like spinning around. And he slams Kelly Hugh down on the fucking for the fucking dance floor. That was a pretty entertaining scene. I didn't mind that one so much. So that takes care of Kelly Hugh and her bitch friend. So they're dead. Um, Julius he just gets thrown into the water and holds his breath and for like felt like a half an hour until uh. Until they make it out of there, and until the last survivors make it out of there in a fucking lifeboat, and he give me, he jumps up out of the water and gets on the boat. He held his breath for like felt like half an hour. Maybe this movie just felt longer to me. I don't know, but uh, that was really stupid how he held his breath all that time. But anyway, and you got this guy who Jason's like, this guy runs into Jason. He's got an axe, tries to hit Jason. Jason grabs it, slings it out of the way. The guy takes off running. He takes off running. Fucking uh, Jason just appears in front of him after he's ran like his heart out, and then. Uh, he starts climbing to like the top of the ship, and then he's like all the way at the top. And you show his camera pans back down and shows Jason at the bottom. And he, he comes back up to the guy, and he uh, like fucking he's getting ready to reach the top of it. And he goes like one more inch, and then Jason appears behind him, grabs a hold of him, slings him down. He falls on like he falls on something on the ship and gets like fucking penetrated through his body. And so that kills him. And I'm like, okay, more teleportation. I'm not liking this. I'm not liking the fucking unnecessary teleportation here. If Jason can teleport, explain that he can teleport. Don't like hint around at it or something like that. And also don't throw like some kind of new random ability out just like that. Explain that it's been there the whole time in some way, shape, or form. Uh, or at least try. <laughs> but anyway. So the teleportation thing is stupid as fuck. Um, he got Wade. He's like kind of like the sympathetic nerd guy. He's got a camera he walks around with all the time. 
he's like uh he's walking around he actually shoots a guy thinking it's jason but it's not jason so he accidentally kills a guy uh jason shows up you get a decent scene here where he's got the camera in front of him he's like see jason's feet and he raises it up and it's fucking uh, you know jason standing there and he knocks the camera out of his hands and then he takes off running uh he trips jason grabs him slings him onto these uh well slings him onto this like fucking uh this keyboard i guess you'd call it um Slings him onto this device and it fucking caused him to catch fire, and uh, his body gets burned up, which is which is uh, decently interesting. I mean, the burn death like that. And you get a funny scene here where like Jason's standing there and he fucking there's this button that says in case of fire and he actually punches it. I thought that was remotely funny. I got a laugh out of that. You get a crazy Ralph ripoff character on here, or a do over character with some old deckhand guy keeps saying we are doomed, and the character Charles keeps thinking that he is the killer even though we know he's not. So <laughs> he gets hit in the back with an axe off screen and he gets killed. So. Eh, he's okay. We, I'm kind of sick of the We Are Doomed guys, but that's just me. Uh, so he's dead. So that can was killed like that. Wade was killed by the getting set on fire. Uh, the last people left manages to make it off the ship. They get in a lifeboat. They get out of there. Of course, Julius popped out of the water after, after miraculously holding his breath for who knows how long. Because I didn't time it. But, uh, but it felt like half an hour. So they get out of there. Um... They row all the way to Manhattan the rest of the way. Jason just, I guess, follows them underneath the ocean floor, I guess. Just walks underneath there and makes it there. It would have been cool if we could get like a scene of Jason versus like a giant squid or a great white shark or something. But we don't. That would have actually livened the movie up for me. But then they get to Manhattan. Uh, this is where the film picks up a little bit. You get some funny stuff here, like where Jason looks at uh, like a hockey team poster. You know, like, you know, like nods it. He like bends his head over does like the head tilt, you know, to see what it, trying to study it, see what it is, you know, that was kind of funny, that was entertaining, um, as soon as they get to New York, they get mugged, which is, I'm like, okay, it's such a stereotypical version of New York, this is so fucking silly and stupid, but, uh, that was stupid, uh, they kidnap Rennie, they're, like, gonna rape her, these two gangbangers are, they inject her with heroin, I think, or something similar, uh, Jason comes up behind one of them, stabs him with, like, a crack needle, Decent, okay, death. He just takes the other guy, though, and just hits his head against the pipe, and I'm like, eh, okay. A little bit more creativity there. I preferred the crack noodle myself. <laughs> but, um, so two gangbangers are dead. He inadvertently just saved Rennie from getting raped, so score one for Jason on that. Uh, even he doesn't like rapists, so. So, um, <clears throat> so Rennie takes off right now there, and the drugs that's in her system wear off in just, like, a matter of seconds, feels like it, so I'm like, okay. <laughs> but, um, so she runs back into Sean and everybody. Um, Julius, he gets the best scene in the whole film. This is one of my favorite scenes in the franchise, even in this shitty film. has a great scene. Uh, they're, he's fucking boxing Jason because he's a boxer, so he boxes him on top of the top of this building. And he, he punches and he punches Jason with everything he's got, and Jason just lets him punch him just for fun. And he punches him like all the way almost to the edge of the building. And then he's so tired he can't take it anymore, and his knuckles have got blood on him. And he's like, take your best shot, motherfucker. And Jason fucking grabs him by the shirt, leans back, and he fucking hits him one time, punches his entire fucking head off, and it rolls into the dumpster. And the dumpster, like, the lid falls and closes. And I'm like, that right there was awesome. If I could have more of that fun shit like that in this movie, I'd like this movie much better. This is Manhattan, and it's called Jason Takes Manhattan. I want to see Jason doing some cool shit in New York. Not just hanging out in back alleys and running around. I want to send him to the police station. Let him wipe out like an entire fucking police unit. Attack him with a SWAT team. You know, have some fun with it. Do like a cornfield scene, kind of like in Freddy vs. Jason, where he was like slashing and gashing and kill like 20-something teenagers. Fucking have him do that to the police force or the SWAT team. That'd be a lot of fun. But no, you know, we don't get any of that. Have Jason go to the Statue of Liberty, kill some people, sling somebody off of it, something like that. No, we don't get that either. Um, so then you're pretty much down to like, uh, let's see, you got Rennie, you got Sean, you got uh, Charles, and you got Rennie's teacher, who's like somebody that she really cares about. Um, they run Jason over with a police car. Jason kills a cop that they meet, so they take his police car. So they run Jason over, decent scene. Kane Hodder does fine here. They run Jason over, and then you see another. Rennie has another hallucination of little Jason. I guess they're hallucinations. She has another hallucination of little Jason who looks different yet a fucking again. And then she crashes the car. She gets out. That's when she has her flashback where her memory finally comes through where she sees why she's afraid of water because of her uncle knocking her into the water. It makes no fucking sense whatsoever. I hate that shit. Um, so after that, they leave. Rennie and Sean leave. Uh, oh, yeah, the car blows up with the teacher in it after they crash, and so that's how the teacher dies. I'm like, okay, whatever. So she's dead, and then, uh, so Rennie and Sean leave, and then, of course, Jason gets back up, goes and kills Charles. Charles takes off running, like, 
runs completely away from Jason, runs all the way to the top of the building, and then you get then you see him get flung out the window where Jason just magically popped up up there. And I'm like, that's so fucking stupid and so lazy. <laughs> but uh the teleportation thing is just a lazy way to get Jason everywhere they want him to go. So then Charles gets flung out the window, he lands on the ground, Jason grabs him, grabs him in some sewage. Okay, decent scene here. Drowns him in a by fucking like barrel of sewage with like a dead rat in it or something. So that was decent. I, I didn't mind that. That was okay. So Charles is dead. Decent scene. Uh, Jason takes off after Rennie and Sean. Uh, they run in. They run like down a fucking uh, escalator, I believe. That was that would have been cool to see Jason go down an escalator like knocking people out of the way, but you don't get that. That would have been entertaining. Um. You get a funny scene where they run by some like street punks and Jason walks by and kicks their stereo and they go, You dead meat slime bag, he just turns around and lifts up his mask and they're like, No, it's cool, man, it's cool. Oh, that was mildly funny. Like I said, have some more this movie's called Jason Takes Manhattan. That's a gimmick title, sending Jason to Manhattan. And it's that obviously takes it up to more of like a B movie fun level. So, you know, have fun with it. Do some funny stuff, you know. Have Jason do some cool, funny, you know, stuff in Manhattan. Have some more fun with it. But you don't hardly get any of that. So that was funny with the street punks. They run into a diner. Uh, well, no wait. They're on. A, they run all the way down an escalator. They go into the fucking subway. And they're on the subway, and then the, Sean turns around, and looks over, and there's Jason. I'm like, how the fuck did he get there? How the fuck did he get there? But whatever. So he's there on the subway. They Jason takes off running after him. Sean pulls the emergency brake. Jason goes flying backwards. Jason like knocks some random girl out of his way just because she's in the way. He's only focused on killing these two people, which I understand because Jason only focuses usually on one certain target because they were like invading his territory, I guess. Uh, and that's usually the reason he kills people. But still, you know, have some people get in his way. You know, try to stop him. Something shit. Surely, the goodness, not everybody in New York just doesn't not give a fuck about somebody being attacked by a psychopathic killer. That's the way they play it here. I mean, nobody even seems to notice Jason. Fuck, have him run into the Ninja Turtles. That would be more entertaining than just than what we get. I like the Ninja Turtles. But anyway, so Jason's still coming after him. Sean knocks him onto the fucking tracks, and he gets electrocuted. Decent scene here. We know Jason's not dead. Electricity ain't going to kill him. Uh, Eventually, they make it into this diner. Um, they're inside the diner. Jason fucking just plows his way into the diner, and you get fucking King Kresner. Uh or Kres Zinger, I don't know how you pronounce his name, from Freddy vs. Jason, who played Jason in that film, and he walks up to Jason, and he's like, you son of a bitch, and he fucking grabs him, and just goes, wham, slings him directly into this mirror, and it's like, really cool, I like that, that was really entertaining, I thought that was fun, so, it's it's almost like Kane Hodder, you know, it's just funny picturing, you know, Kane Hodder Jason throwing the Freddy vs. Jason into the fucking window, that was just funny to me, I don't know why, well, I do know why, I just find it ironic and funny, I'm sure other people probably did too, but uh, that was funny. So then Jason makes it down into the sewer. So you don't let him do hardly anything in Manhattan, and now he's in a fucking sewer. I'm like, okay, I wouldn't, I don't mind him going in the sewer if he had other stuff to do first, but he doesn't do shit. So down in the sewer, they run into this guy down there working. He tells them that fucking sewers flood with toxic waste every night at midnight. And I'm like, again, this makes me blow my own brains out because I'm thinking, what the fuck? The sewers flood with toxic waste every night at midnight. No wonder there's radioactive turtles in the fucking sewers. That makes no fucking sense. That's so stupid. I like the idea of Jason being killed by toxic waste, but not this way. This is just so fucking stupid. But, uh, so Jason kills that guy. He hits him in the head with a wrench. Sean gets knocked out. He chases after Rennie. Rennie throws some toxic waste in his face. Jason, like, grunts, I believe, or screams, like, Arrgh! Once he get hit in the face with toxic waste and burning his brain, I guess. He pulls off his mask. Jason's face, you get jack-o'-lantern Jason in this one, he looks like utter shit. Jason still comes after Rennie, but he's going slower now since his brain was fried with toxic waste. Rennie and Sean are trying to make it out of there. Jason, like, grabs uh, Rennie's leg, and uh, then comes the big flood of toxic waste. And I believe you get Jason speaking right here. I'm not for sure if it's him speaking or just, like, a replay of the scene when he drowned uh, with the voice coming, kind of looks like, and kind of looking like it's coming out of his mouth, his child voice. But it's still interesting here. I don't really mind it. Jason turns around and looks directly like at the camera, and he's like, Mommy, don't let me drown, Mommy, because it's like a big flood of toxic waste coming for him, and I guess it reminds him of his drowning when he was a kid. But uh, he gets hit by that, and uh, he comes up out like, you, see, you think he's dead right there, but then Rennie looks down, he like comes up out of the toxic waste, his body does, and his face is like melting apart. Just a decent, entertaining scene, but they show a flash of Jason, like little Jason drowning too, to coincide with it, and he has no deformities once again, so I'm like, fuck that, fuck that, you just killed what could have been interesting here of Jason getting melted away by toxic waste. So fuck you filmmaker. 
But, uh, then you get the stupidest fucking ending humanly imaginable. Humanly imaginable. This is the stupidest ending I've seen in any Friday the 13th film. This is the stupidest. This is one of the stupidest endings, stupidest endings I've seen in a fucking movie, period. Where they look down there, well, Rennie looks down there, and Jason's, like, transformed back into a little kid. And I'm like, oh, God. Oh, man. Mercy, please. Please, filmmaker, please. How the fuck did he transform back into a little kid by being getting hit by toxic waste? I guess you could say, like, because all the visions and stuff she's had in the movie, that maybe this is, like, Big Jason's dead, so he's, like, reverted back to his childhood form some way, shape, or form, some kind of spiritual thing. But it makes no sense how toxic waste is the thing that do that, that does that to him. I guess it's because he drowned uh, like he did originally when he died, so it's kind of like he's killed the same way, so that somehow reversed him back to a child for some reason, any, what, I still don't completely get that, but whatever, uh, so they get up out of the fucking sewer, for some reason, this, even the smell of toxic waste, I'm pretty sure it would have killed them, and then that close to it, but still, they get out of the sewer, and they're perfectly fine, and then it's cute in the movie, Jason's dead, so that's, such a waste of a movie with Jason Takes Manhattan, which could be such a fun idea, and it's just wasted completely. And this movie sucks. Uh, this is a uh, one and a half star film out of a possible four. This is not a good movie. It's only barely better than part five just because it's slightly more entertaining with Kane Hodder as Jason killing people left and right through the whole movie. Uh, this is not a very good movie, and despite what many people think about Jason Goes to Hell, I know it's kind of like a split opinion on that film. I still find that film better than this one. So I'll see you guys again with a review for Jason Goes to Hell. And if you're a Jason fan, uh, make sure that you watch these films in order and make sure you're <laughs> Uh, yeah, make sure you watch these films in order so by the time you get up to this one, you you can might be able to prepare yourself ahead of time because you probably have heard how shitty this one is because it's pretty fucking bad. I'll see you guys again with the review for Jason Goes to Hell.